Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands in which we meet today, their elders past, present and emerging, and also to acknowledge that the traditional owners of this land were engaged with China for more than our 200 years, which uh, the Europeans have been resident in Australia. It could be up to 700 years ago that the traditional owners of this land have been engaged with China. So events like today are very important and it reflects the strength of Australia's commercial relationship with China, of which trade and investment is a fundamental part. And I warmly acknowledge uh, and thank Hong Kong Graduate School of Business uh, and the Victorian State Government and the supporting organisations for bringing us all here today. Graduate education and education more gen generally are such powerful enablers of our relationship and in an international context, it helps to build the all important people to people relationships. These connections bring bilateral relationships alive. And it's times like these that we need to call on those uh, people to people relationships to ensure that our relationship continues to mature and to prosper. The theme of today's forum, shared responsibilities between China and Australia in an era of global transformation is pertinent given the events that are unfolding in the world economy. And as Dean Chiang Bing has just outlined, the competition between the US and China creates ripples across the whole world. What we need to try to encourage is that these relationships and these tensions are resolved in a way that maintains a global balance of a multipolar world. So one of the issues that I'd like to highlight is that the relationship between China and Australia is not a fiercely competitive relationship. And in fact, Australia and China, our two economies, are the most complementary economies in the world. We are not in fierce competition. The prosperity of both economies actually is built on the complementarities of our economies. But we need to take care of this complementarity and we need to ensure that the discussions that we have around our complementarity uh, is made number one in all of our engagements. So Australia is a strong trading nation and we also welcome uh, foreign direct investment. And in fact, Australia's growth, our historical growth, uh, 200 years, and more particularly the 28 years of consecutive growth in Australia, has been built on the fact that we are a trading nation and we also encourage foreign direct investment into our country. We play great stock in our bilateral relationship uh, and our broader relationship with China amongst being the most important relationship that Australia has. Australia has a long history of contact with China and over the last 200 years, we've had Chinese migration to Australia. So I think this is also something to remember. It's not Australia and China. In fact, we've had Chinese migration to Australia for more than 200 years. So there is part of China in Australia. So it's not oppositional in the way in, in which the, the debate is commonly framed. Our commercial relationship with China is one of enduring strength and those of us who have been working in the Australia-China relationship for many years will remember that Australia was one of the first uh, Western economies that recognised China as a market economy. And this is a very, that was very important uh, for 
the re-engagement of China onto the global stage. So as I said, our economies are complementary. And it's important that Australia and China continue to invest in this relationship and at multiple levels. The two-way commitment in, is central to our shared responsibility. The free trade agreement between Australia and China, which was delivered in 2015, gave a very firm foundation to our ongoing relationship. And it's unlocked activity, particularly amongst the Australian businesses and many of them who are present here today. So in terms of trade outcomes, China remains Australia's number one trading partner and China has held that position in Australia for the past 10 years. So two-way merchandise trade comprises 28% and China accounts for a third of Australia's exports. So on the back of CHAFTA, we've had growth in food exports. Uh, so we're very proud of our beef exports to China, which have grown in an unprecedented fashion, 56% in 2018, totals 1.3 billion. And also bottled wine to China. It now is valued at 900 million. And, Australia, and China is, continues to be the market for Australian resource commodities. So in 2018, Australia has exported iron ore, coal, LNG to China, which has totaled more than 80 billion. Another area of collaboration between China and Australia is in international tourism and international education. So in 2018, Australia received 1.4 million Chinese visitors to Australia, 1.4 million. But it's very interesting when you look at the composition of those visitors to Australia, and very pertinent for today's hosts, actually, because of the 1.4 million, 255 1,896 were Chinese student, students who came to Australia. But in addition to that, of that 1.4 million, many of the visitors who came to Australia came to visit their children. They came to visit their children who were studying in Australia, so it was friends and relatives. So if we actually look at the contribution that the visitor economy, the Chinese visitor economy, has made to Australia, in this last year, 58% of that expenditure has actually been associated with education. So it just underlines how important the Australian-Chinese education relationship is. But we also have investment relationships. So in terms of investment, China has rapidly emerged as Australia's fifth largest source of foreign direct investment into Australia. And it's val now valued at more than 40 billion at the end of 2017, with a total investment of around 65 billion. So the question is, why is there so much Chinese investment into Australia? And one of the areas that we can be quite proud of as Australians is that we have a safe investment environment. It's safe, it's low risk, and those who invest in Australia are treated on an equal footing with Australians who are investing in Australia. So if there are disputes, foreign investors and domestic investors, there is no privilege given one to the other. So there is a pipeline of Chinese investment coming to Australia. But what we also know is that it's decreasing. 
Chinese investment to Australia has de decreased uh, by 36.3% three, in 2018 compared to 2017. So Australia thinks, is there a problem? But when you compare it to the, the decline in Chinese investment in other countries, it's declined faster in the US than it has declined in Australia. So also the type of uh, investments from China have changed and one might say matured. So early in the relationship, much of the investment was going into real estate. But if you look at the current Chinese investment in Australia, much of it is going into other areas of the economy. I'd particularly like to call out uh, some of our, the investment in major infrastructure, including road and rail, but also in pharmaceuticals, health and wellbeing, food processing, uh, and other areas of the economy. And I, to call out one form of investment, in 2015, the China Communications Construction Company acquired John Holland which is an iconic Australian brand. But this acquisition then has pumped capital into John Holland, which has allowed it to deliver on some of Australia's biggest infrastructure projects, including Melbourne's Metro Tunnel. So the, in, the injection of capital into John Holland has actually turbocharged an iconic Australian brand. We're also seeing growing interest in renewable energy projects and companies like Goldwind investing here in Victoria as well as in New South Wales and in Tasmania. So the shift in China has reflected in a fundamentally different type of relationship in terms of investment in Australia. So what I'd like to do now is to talk about what lies ahead. Uh, one of the uh, privileges that I've had since I've joined Austrade was to visit China and to visit uh, I've visited China many, many times in the past, but as the CEO of Austrade, I had the opportunity to visit Chengdu, uh, and in the past we had a very close relationship with Sichuan University. Uh, but when I went to Chengdu, the reason I went is because I wanted to have a look at where Cochlea is going to build its factory for hearing implants. Now currently, Cochlear exports 30 implant devices to China, 30,000, sorry. So 30,000, but the demand in China is huge and we call it the bionic ear. So Cochlear is taking their technology to Chengdu and establishing a factory there so they can actually increase the uh, number of hearing implants units in China, but increase them, but also decrease the price. So it's made accessible all across China, and not only across China, but to other parts of the world. So this is a form of Australian investment in China, and it's Australia taking our very best technology and sharing this with China. And it's not really surprising. Australia is quite a young country. We're only 200 years old uh, in terms of uh, our current settlement. settlement. Uh, but we've, com we've been able to achieve 16 or win 16 Nobel Prizes over that relatively short period. And half of those have been in clinical medicine or physiology. So Australia is globally competitive in these areas. So when Australia takes our medical technology 
to China, you can be guaranteed that we are taking the very best that we have to China. So I had the opportunity to visit Chengdu, to visit the university, uh, to actually give a lecture at the university, so I was very pleased to return to Sichuan University. But to see what can be done uh, when two countries look at their complementarity and are very generous with each other in terms of their technology. So looking to the future, what does the future for Australia and China's trade and investment relationship, what does it look like? So I had the opportunity to go to Shenzhen, and when we talk about 12 cents, I actually went to 10 cents, <laughs> uh, and to see the tremendous uh, capacity of 10 cent. And Australia doesn't have the uh, quantum, but we have a number of companies now who are basing themselves in Shenzhen to build their prototypes. A lot of our startups and our scale-ups are going to Shenzhen because they can build a prototype there in a week where it, could, it might take a month if they did that in Australia. So again, it's a complementary a relationship. So when Austrade looks at the relationship and the future relationship between Australia and China, we're wanting to focus on the very best that both countries have to offer, and particularly in the innovation space. So we look at uh, opportunities around autonomous vehicles, and China and Australia are starting to work together in developing these technologies. Australia and China are also working together in the development of now what they call extended reality. So this is virtual reality, augmented reality, so it's in all-inclusive term. So the two countries are working together in these technologies and it has clear applications beyond the gaming industry. It has applications particularly in education. We also are working together in other health areas, so for example, in ageing population that's facing a growing rate of chronic disease and the overburden of the hospital system. So our healthcare providers are already sharing expertise in oncology and cardiovascular services technologies. And next month, Austrade will lead a mission to China with some of Australia's leading hospitals and clinical service providers focused on forming new partnerships to rapidly enhance China's healthcare capability. So fourthly, China is also emerging as a biotech powerhouse and Australia has a great deal to offer as a partner of choice in clinical trials. And finally, in the e-commerce area, and I see Maggie here from Alibaba, uh, in the e-commerce area, it's another dimension of the relationship that presents enormous scope for future growth. Australian products continue to do very well in cross-border transactions on China's online e-commerce online e platforms. So Austrade plays a very important role in promoting the relationship between Australia and China. We were present at the CIIE uh, function or uh, forum in Shanghai last year. Uh, we had many Australian companies present at the uh, CIIE. But one of the uh, events that I would really like to mention, and very important here for Victoria, is that next month, Austrade's coordinating a two-week Festival of Australia program, uh, which will see consumer and business networking events across 10 of China's largest cities. And this, will, this is why it's important for, for Victoria. This will culminate in the annual AFL game between Port Adelaide and St Kilda, which is on the 2nd of June, and it's going to showcase the best of Australian sport. And I also understand that Victoria uh, is taking a sports delegation uh, to China at this time. 
So I trust that everyone uh, who is able will come to Shanghai to watch this game. Uh, and now we have so many alumni from Australian universities, Chinese alumni, and we hope that they're all going to be present as well. So major events like these, along with other targeted business missions, are key elements of our trade and investment facilitation. And ultimately, events like these bring people together, celebrating the very important relationship between Australia and China. Thank you very much.